My name is Max Forer. Uh, I'm a partner at Miller Nash, and I'm on the governance committee for Sport Oregon. My childhood sports, I grew up playing every sport I possibly could. Uh, um, I tried playing soccer, and unfortunately I tackled a kid early on when I was just a young person, and my dad thought, ah, it's not gonna be right for him. And basketball, I wasn't fast or athletic, so I found my way into football. Uh, which then led me to the opportunity of being an invited walk-on to the University of Oregon football team. Uh, that was better than being at any D1 AA school in scholarship because my goal was to try to be the best and play for the best. And fortunately, I was given that opportunity and um, was able to be part of some of the greatest Oregon football teams of all time. One specific game that stands out to me was in my junior year when we were playing at Arizona it was a memorable game in part because we were behind by so much and we were driving down the field to try to score a touchdown and the fans from Arizona came and jumped over the guardrail prematurely to rush the field uh, anticipating that we would not score and tie the game but we did and we ended up winning in double overtime. My transition from being a student athlete to professional was hard. Um, I think when anyone is a former student, a student athlete, that's all you've done is your sport. You've mastered that and to then all of a sudden you're done playing your sport is a difficult transition. Um, I went gold mining in Alaska um, and then came back and, and was just working jobs until I decided I wanted to go back to law school. But once you can put those ingredients that you, you had as a student athlete to being a professional, it's it's hard to stop a former student athlete out there. An average day for me at Miller Nash ranges from calls and emergencies that someone needs my advice and thoughts to no one's talking to me because I could just work on a discrete project to having lunches or dinners or engaging with clients and also being involved in the community and being a steward of this community. Um, every day is different. I feel very fortunate to be at Miller Nash and to be contributing the way I do to this community and to, our, to my clients. The Olivia Moultrie case was a once in a, a generation case in Portland, Oregon, where Olivia was the youngest player to ever sign with Nike as a soccer player, and therefore she lost her amateur ability playing the NCAA. Um, in turn, the only route for her to play professionally was with the Portland Thorns or the NWSL. The NWSL had an age restriction that you had to be at least 18 years old to play, but Olivia was good enough at 15 to be able to play. And so we sued the NWSL under the Sherman Act to effectively say that your rule is anti-competitive. We went to federal court and Olivia testified and we won our first hearing, and we went back again a couple weeks later, and we won our second hearing, and then Olivia got the opportunity to sign a contract with the Portland Thorns and then get on the field, and we settled. I mean, all I can say is going to court was worth it to play here. Typically in law, you don't get to see your, your uh, your contributions so like vividly on the field the way that we get to see Olivia play and it's incredibly satisfying and it's an honor to be a part a small part of the success of Olivia Moultrie and I am so excited to see what she does and continues to do going forward in her career. July 1st 2021 the NCAA changed their rules to allow college athletes to profit off of their name, image, and likeness, doing commercial agreements, doing a whole bunch of opportunities that they have. And so that has now changed the sports industry on its head, where if you wanted a sponsorship with an athlete, you'd have to go professional. But now you can engage with any college player across the country, and even high school players in most states, where you can they could be a part of your business and structure. So it's um, it's completely changed sports, sports marketing, and it will continue to change it going forward in, in the future. I started saying that with my student athlete background, with the fact I worked for a sports agency, a national, uh, international sports agency, that I worked for, um, an, or the Oregon Athletic Department while I was in school, that I had a unique 
background and understanding to something that's going to need that unique background and understanding and have been uh, involved in it with uh, collectives and brands and helping advise uh, various people about this industry and the best way to help and be involved in it. So I'm very involved. NIL is going to be for college athletes and high school athletes will be around forever. Uh, you cannot put the genie back in the bottle. And understanding and being involved in the industry now, it will be key to better understand the industry later on down the line. For athletes who are looking for their first NIL deal or looking to expand their NIL deals, my advice is to have a wonderful and great group of advisors around you, your parents, maybe an agent, maybe a lawyer, accountants, um, your advisors, and two, to make sure that you believe in what you're doing and, and you care. I got connected to Sport Oregon when I was a very young attorney with Drew Mahalik. And I started on the Young Professionals Board as a board member. And I was always very excited to see if I can help and contribute to what I call the big board, now that I'm on the big board. And so after two or three years on the Young Professionals Board, I was had the opportunity to join the big board. And then Jim called me and said, hey, would you like to serve on the governance committee, which I did. And I was able to help support Sport Oregon with the rewriting of bylaws and policies and to support uh, the inner workings of Sport Oregon, the, how the sausage is made of Sport Oregon. And that's how I'm involved. And it's an honor uh, to serve and contribute to Sport Oregon that is doing wonderful and amazing things for this community.